Hello, and welcome once again to the video. In this one, I'll be continuing my look at the Formula One Championship 2023. Doing uh, my usual casual uh, look uh, from a fan's perspective of uh, the race. I'm coming quite fresh from the race, having uh, only watched it uh, live uh, a short time ago, uh, a few hours ago. So uh, I thought I would uh, get in there uh, straight away. I didn't, I normally make notes, uh, a few little notes during the race. I didn't this time, I so I just wanted to enjoy the race. So apologies if, uh, if uh, my fans look at this is not quite as detailed as normal um, but it's never supposed to be uh, you know I'm not Ted Kravitz as I always say so it's, it's not supposed to be a technical look at the race just literally from a fan a fan's view so uh, as usual I will be uh, writing down the finishing order top 10 in the drivers championship and then the rundown of the constructors championship i'll do that first and then uh, a few words about it uh, afterwards so this was uh, race number 18 wasn't it usa at the circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. I'd love to go to that race. I really would. Great circuit. Um, great part of the world. Uh, I have been to the US Grand Prix in 2006 uh, in Indianapolis. I wish I'd gone in 2007 when Hamilton had that great fight with Alonso, but um, um, I didn't know that at the time, so. <laughs> I went in 2006, unfortunately. That was quite a flat race. Just a dominant win by Ferrari. Anyway, so let's start this one down. And to get this in, make sure this is in focus as usual. supposed to say.
history. Drivers uh, Constructors Championship. Okay, so uh, what did we think of <clears throat> that race? Uh, let me just have a little drink. Right, <clears throat> well, I think that as usual, as happens, I think, pretty much every year, uh, the Circuit of the Americas threw up a fantastic race. It always does it. <clears throat> you always have that thing in the last few laps where um, it always seems to involve Hamilton because he's so good here at this track. And he's either chasing down someone in the last few laps and you don't know if he'll get them or not, or he's being chased down in the last few laps because he's on a harder tyres or, or older tyres or something like that and you don't know if he's going to get caught or not. Uh, he got caught by Verstappen, was it last year? Uh, did he get caught by Verstappen in 2021 as well? I can't remember, quite remember. But um, I remember he caught Vettel uh, in the last few laps uh, some time ago that was now. When was that? Uh, 2017 or something was it? Um, but yeah, he's, he's won... Hamilton has won at this circuit five times. Not bad, seeing as it started only in 2012. <clears throat> but this was yet another fantastic race and, of course, featured Lewis Hamilton again. I thought this was great after the Qatar Grand Prix that I found uh, pretty tiring. T 
tedious, basically. Um, a bit flat and uninteresting. And if I wasn't so into Formula One, I would have just turned it off and walked away. But because I'm a hardcore fan, I, I would never do that. Um, but many people would. So that's why I was very keen for this one, especially being an American race. Uh, I was very keen for this one to uh, put on a good show, basically, even if Verstappen won. And uh, it was, it was a great show. Um, the, uh, the American uh, sporting audience is a tough nut to crack. Um, three Grand Prix now in America, so obviously someone over there feels it's worth pursuing F1. Uh, we did have three American Grand Prix in 1982, I believe, and other years in the early 80s, we had, early and mid-80s, we had two US Grand Prix a number of times. Um, but this is the first time we've had three since 1982. And um, uh, that's great. Big market, obviously. Um, so I really wanted it to be a good race. And it really was. It was Max Verstappen, of course, his 50th Grand Prix win. Now, I think, what is it? It's obviously we've got, uh, got Hamilton top, haven't we, on 103. Uh, second is Shumi on 91. Third is Vettel, uh, isn't it, I believe, on 52. Fourth, Prost, 51. And fifth now, Verstappen on 50. Incredible. I mean, that's amazing. Verstappen's only about, how old is he? He's about 17 or something, isn't he? That's it. It's unbelievable. Um, amazing performance. Um, double world champion now. Well, officially three times. Three times a world champion. <laughs> um Sorry, I, sh I shouldn't keep going on about 2021. Um, but 50 Grand Prix wins, that's that's incredible. Um, yeah, amazing that is. Well deserved. He'll go sailing past Prost and Vettel, of course. Um, the only thing that will stop him catching Schumacher... Um, who knows about Hamilton, because we don't know how many races he's still going to win, of course. He might have a dominant season next year and win 15 races, who knows. Which will put him out of sight, probably, of Verstappen. But um, Verstappen will will catch Schumacher if he continues. But he's been, he's been making these little um, comments, mumbling comments about how I'm not going to be in Formula 1 forever. Who knows, I might retire in a couple of years' time. I wonder if he's getting bored of winning already. It's possible. It's a possibility. But yeah, that race, I pretty much <laughs> barely took any notice of anyone below the first three. That was fantastic. Um, Verstappen, Hamilton, Norris. Norris taking the lead early on. Uh, great stuff. Verstappen coming up from sixth on the grid. Um, poor old Leclerc. Uh, started on pole position and just went backwards. That's his, apparently that's his 10th. Um, I knew he'd had a lot of poles where he hadn't won, but this is, I didn't know until they mentioned it during the race, but this is actually Leclerc's 10th pole position on the trot without winning. The last time that was, that was done, because believe it or not, it has been done before. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, but uh, Nelson Piquet, the original Nelson Piquet, um, did that between... Uh, 84 and 87. Um, so BK was in the Williams in 87 and 86 and in 85 and 84 he was in a Brabham and I remember it was a turbocharged Brabham and that was back when some cars had turbo cars and some didn't and the turbos were horrifically unreliable but very fast so that explains why PK often had pole positions and then would retire from the race. So, yeah, I'm not surprised in a way that PK, that happened with PK. Um, 
but yeah, that's it. That's incredible. 10 pole positions on the trot for Leclerc with no wins, but he just drifted backwards. I thought he was going to do a lot better. I thought the Ferraris, they, they delayed their first pit stops. Um, they were the last to pit on their, on their f first stint. And I, and they were going, seemed to be going slow as well as if they were holding back, thinking of later in the race. So when eventually on, uh, he came in for his second pit stop, Leclerc, and came out, I thought, this is it. Leclerc is going to go, he's going to catch him up, not necessarily win, but he's going to really drastically reduce the gap to the leaders. Um, and he didn't at all. He just fell back. I don't understand what happened there with the Ferraris. Science was very quick on his last stint, but where was he in the first two stints, you know? Um, at one point, it looked like Hamilton and Norris were going to possibly do one-stop strategies. Verstappen seemed to be nailed onto a two-stopper straight away, and he came in quite early, very early, um, to change his mediums. Um, and he went on to uh, mediums again, didn't he? Yeah, he went on to mediums again which confirmed that he would have to stop again. And Hamilton and Norris went on to hards, which meant they could have possibly done one stops. Um, but then they ended up having two stops later as well. Norris onto hards again, because I think it was the only new tyre that he had available. Uh, the Any mediums he had were old tyres. And uh, Hamilton came in for brand new mediums. When he stopped, when Hamilton stopped on that second pit stop for mediums, um, I thought he was going to win. Uh, the commentators were still talking about Verstappen v Norris and even mentioning watch out for Russell. <laughs> well, Russell was fast, but he was a long way behind with cars in between him and the leaders. So I was thinking Hamilton. I was thinking there's still 17, 18 laps to go. Um, that's long enough to catch Verstappen, but also short enough for his tyres to not wear out. So I thought fresh mediums, Hamilton on fresh mediums, Verstappen on old hards, Norris on old hards. This is Hamilton's race. So I thought he would win. And he very nearly did, of course. He only missed out by a second or so. Got held up by Le passing Leclerc. Got held up passing Norris. I mean, you expect to get held up when you're overtaking someone, of course. So that wasn't bad luck, really. Although he did supposedly i didn't notice it at the time but he, i think he got held up overtaking lapping ricardo in the junior red bull so um i lost a second and a half according to toto that's bad but uh, but you expect um norris and leclerc to put up a put up a fight and make it a bit difficult and lose him a bit of time but with verstappen's brake problems that he had ah oh, that was so that was so close, but it seems that every single uh, US Grand Prix at Austin at the Circuit of the Americas, um, which they call COTA, they shorten to COTA. Is that an uh, acronym or an acronym? There is a difference between an acronym and an an acronym, isn't there? <laughs> I think one of them is is an actual word, whereas one of them is just pronounceable as a series of letters. I think COTA is uh, an, an acronym as opposed to an anacronym. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Um, but, um, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, so this race always seems to throw up a fantastic um, final few laps with one person on better tyres catching another person. Um, and as I say, every time it seems to involve Hamilton. So that was great. I, I didn't really pay much attention to everything else that was going on. Russell had his um, ding dong at the start, didn't he? We went off the track. I think he was given a five second penalty for that, wasn't he? Which is a bit unfair because it was at the start of the race, just like Hamilton went off at the start of the sprint race which you will notice I haven't mentioned because I'm not really a sprint fan. But um, Hamilton went off at the start of that. Uh, he wasn't penalised. Was Russell penalised? I think he got a penalty, didn't he? Anyway, anyway, he was way out of it. Uh, Gasly was sort of just eighth the whole race. Um, Sunoda got the fastest lap, of course, at the end. Um, 
I would say well done, but not really, because it was on soft tyres. So um, it's fairly obvious that that was going to happen. Poor old Alban, or as I always say, he's always either 7th or 11th. The 7-Eleven club, basically. I wonder if he's ever been to a 7-Eleven. Because he does great sponsorship for 7-Eleven. Always finishing 7th or 11th. Um, uh, so... <clears throat> And there he is, yeah, I've said that before many times, and there he is in 11th place again. Teammate, 12th, terrible. Well, terrible, it's not terrible. Um, you know, I'm not saying Sergeant drove terrible to be 12th, he didn't at all. Uh, what I mean is it's terrible to just miss out on the points. Hulkenberg, Bottas, Joe, Magnussen, Ricardo. Hulkenberg to get up to 13th from the pit lane's quite good. Uh, the Aston Martins, what I noticed at the start of the race, the Hasses were in the pit lane, stationary, ready to go. The Aston Martins were just pulling out of their garage as the race started. Um, now, was that intentional? Because it meant that they were they had basically a rolling start in the pit lane because they never stopped. The Hasses were freed and allowed to leave the pit lane, so they started and then the Aston Martins rolled up behind and kept going. So they had a rolling start. Did that give them an advantage? Are they allowed to do that? I assume they are allowed to do that. That's just something I noticed. Ricardo, uh, he was hampered by being put onto a uh, one-stop strategy, which absolutely didn't work at all. Uh, yeah, Alonso retired in the MP Astri, had that ding-dong with Ocon, which basically retired both of their cars eventually. Well, not long after the accidents. <clears throat> so it's very big shame for Piastri in particular. But what a fantastic race. Um, uh, it's still disappointing <laughs> um, that uh, Verstappen won, uh, simply because I think it's good for the sport for Verstappen to not win at the moment. Just like I used to think it was, or it would be a good thing for Hamilton to not win so many races and not win so many championships. I, I wanted him to, and I was happy that he was, but I was aware that that could potentially damage the popularity of the sport. I had friends that said there's no point in watching because Hamilton wins every time. Uh, I used to say to them, well, he doesn't, uh, but also soon he won't. Um, nothing goes on forever, you know. Um, dominate, team dominations don't, don't just last for eternity, you know, they last a few seasons. Um, well, Mercedes went on quite a long time, but uh, you know what I mean. So I fully expect Red Bull's dominance to uh, be past its peak now. I will be surprised if they are dominant next year. Uh, I know they've had a long time to prepare 20, 2024's car this year, Red Bull, more than any other team. But um, they were particularly good going into 2022 because they got the new car designs from the new regulations absolutely perfect. Well, there are no new regulations going into next year, so they can't surprise anyone with a, a, you know, a radical new car. Although I have to say, of course, last year, it wasn't the Red Bull that was radical, was it? It was the Mercedes uh, with its zero side pods that the Red Bull actually went for quite a, an ordinary concept with the new regulations, as did Ferrari. And both those teams proved to have done the right thing. But anyway, um, I digress a little bit. Or am I digressing? I think I am digressing because I'm not talking about the race, am I? Um, but yeah, so I was, gonna, I was saying, wasn't I? I was a bit disappointed with Verstappen winning. But of course, he only won just on the record books. It's yet another Verstappen win. But that race was super exciting. Uh, I just, it was just great watching Hamilton chase them down. Uh, Norris doing so well in the early and uh, mid part of the race. Even after the second pit stop, Norris seemed to be hassling uh, uh, Verstappen staying within DRS, but then suddenly he just started dropping away. Uh, did they did they wait too long before bringing Hamilton in for his uh, first pit stop? 
yes, in hindsight, as Toto Wolf said, yes, but they didn't know how quickly those uh, medium tyres were going to fall away. He was doing perfectly good times after 20 laps, and they needed him to go to 24 laps. Um, but um, after that 20th lap, the, the two or three laps after that were horrific, and they quickly yanked him into the pits. By then the damage was done. He had lost six, seven seconds. Um, but, you know, in hindsight, yes, they should have bought him in earlier. But uh, they didn't know that his tyres were going to go off the cliff quite like that. Medium tyres don't normally collapse to that degree. Softs, maybe, but not mediums. So, yeah, Mercedes obviously a little bit disappointed, but they should be happy with how well their new up upgrades have worked, just like McLaren's upgrade worked fantastically well from Austria onwards. Um, this new upgrade on the Mercedes is obviously uh, working really well. And um, Mexico, um, I'm going to suggest that Lewis Hamilton is going to win the Mexican Grand Prix. It's only a suggestion. <laughs> it's only a suggestion. It's not an, not an instruction. Um, or a, or a full-on prediction necessarily. It's just a just a hint, just a suggestion in pencil um, that uh, Hamilton may well possibly could maybe be in a position to think about the slightest possibility of maybe winning the Mexican Grand Prix. Um, it's going to be very exciting anyway. It's only a week to wait. This has really made me excited about the last few races. Uh, not so much Las Vegas. I, I love the the scenery of Las Vegas. Will be great. I've been to Las Vegas. F uh, how many times have I been to Las Vegas? Uh, one, two, three, four times. I've been to Las Vegas twice in two thousand, uh, which was back in the days when you had coins coming out of the freight machines and you had had the little little bucket to collect the coins that went ching 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 ching. Uh, now they just give you a ticket. <laughs> um, it's not quite not quite the same thing. Uh, yeah, twice in 2000 and 2005 and 2009. So I'm super uh, excited about the surroundings of the uh, Grand Prix. But uh, the actual race itself might just be flat. Um, it's uh, it's going to have... Uh, it's going to be a little bit like... Um, uh, a little bit like... Oh, what was that European race in in Spain? Uh, it was the European race sort of 10 plus years ago, 10 to 15 years ago. I, I cannot think of it off the top of my head for some reason. Anyway, that street circuit had barriers uh, and catch fencing right next to the track, just like Singapore does. So when you're watching the race, you're not really seeing much of the scenery at all. You're just seeing loads of catch fencing right up close to the track. What will the overtaking be like? I don't know, I haven't looked at the circuit. Maybe I should look at the circuit, but um, uh, the actual scenery, the setting uh, of Las Vegas, that's going to be exciting. But uh, as I say, the Mexican Grand Prix, the racing should be uh, fantastic. Really looking forward to that. Uh, same with uh, Brazil. Uh, less so, well, maybe Abu Dhabi. That does have a very long straight, doesn't it? Abu Dhabi. Um Yes, that might be good there, but uh, definitely the next two races. So, um, there you have it. I think I'm just about done. Fantastic race. Yes, for Stappen one. I'm happy for this. I'm a stats man. I love stats. So I'm, I'm quite happy to have a fifth person with 50 Grand Prix wins. However, for the health of the sport, I would have rather it. I would, I would have rather Hamilton or Norris. And because I'm English, I would have rather Hamilton or Norris manage to get past Verstappen on the last lap or something uh, uh, just to give F1's popularity uh, uh, a big boost basically it's doing well thanks to Netflix but um, just imagine how popular Formula 1 would be it's going up in popularity all the time so just imagine how popular it would be if Verstappen wasn't winning every single race <laughs> so um, let's look forward to next year when that may be the case so, um, oh, just have a little look at the championships. 
I just wanted to comment. Uh, what do I want to question? Hamilton and Perez. Will Hamilton catch Perez? Yes. These upgrades have, I said last week, no, or a couple of weeks ago, whenever the last race was, I said no. Um, but I didn't think he'd catch Perez. But now I think yes, because the upgrades are so good. Perez will come uh, alive, maybe a little bit more so in Mexico, possibly, unless the pressure gets to him. But uh, Hamilton, uh, I, th I expect to finish ahead of Perez, barring any incidents in every remaining race, or four remaining races. So he should catch Perez. Norris and Leclerc. Oh, and Sainz as well. Sainz, uh, Norris should get up to fifth, I reckon. The, the Ferraris are still very good, though, at the moment, especially Sainz. Um, so it will be difficult, but with Norris banging out podiums left, right and centre, I think Norris will get fifth. So Hamilton, I think, will get second. Norris will get fifth. And over here, look at this, Aston Martin. I mean, that's just... See, now, at the end of the season, I think they were ninth or tenth. Was it ninth last season in the championship? If they had seen this championship lineup uh, rundown, basically, if they'd seen this before this season started, then they would have taken that. They would have been cock a hoop after 18 rounds to be fifth in the championship with 232 points. They would be over the moon. Old Lawrence would be happy as Larry, or happy as, or happy as Lawrence, happy as himself, uh, whatever. Um, but um, of course, having been second for so long, um, this is going to be a disaster now, isn't it? It's like Ferrari last year, ended the year with three wins uh, and uh, second in the Constructors' Championship, and yet a complete disaster because of where they had been earlier in the season, uh, and it lost Binotto his job. So Aston Martin is, is, is mirroring Ferrari last year, ending the championship far better than the previous year, but it actually being classed as a disaster. Um, because of how they've slipped down the field throughout the season. Well, maybe they won't view it as a disaster, but I do. Passed by McLaren now. But that's it. Obviously, Alpine won't catch them. McLaren won't catch Ferrari too far ahead. Uh, Mercedes and Ferrari are still very close. Look, but Mercedes with their upgrade, that should be fine. So I don't expect any of those positions to change. Two points for Alpha Tauri. <clears throat> well done. Um... Yeah, fastest lap and 10th place. So there you go. Um, I'm very much so looking forward to the next race. Um, thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, please do so. I don't just do Formula One videos. I tend to mix it up a bit. Um, but I suppose most of my videos are Formula One, sort of probably 60% of them are Formula One videos. Um, right, so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, as I've just said, uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Uh, or comment or like the video. And I will see you on the very uh, next one which will be a Saturday one if you are literally watching the very next one. Anyway, thank you and see you, see you later.